Hello friends. Today I am going to discuss the derivation and discussion of Maxwell's first equation. To understand what is Maxwell's equation, first we have to discuss what is electric flux. So to understand what is electric flux, do you know what is the meaning of flux? Dear friends, the meaning of flux is simply flow. If I will say the water flux, it means the flow of water through a particular area. Similarly, if there will be a charge, then there will be electric field, then there will be electric field if this is a positive charge or negative charge. So electric flux means the flow of electric lines of flow passing normally through a particular area. So that is the meaning of electric flux. So what is the statement of Gauss law in electrostatics? So electric flux will be used in Gauss law in electrostatics and Gauss law is basically one of the Maxwell's equation. To understand the statement of Gauss law in electrostatics, first let us draw a diagram. Suppose we have a hypothetical surface and charge is placed inside the surface and suppose due to this charge electric flux is flowing out through a very small area element of the surface and there is the direction of the area element. This is the direction of area element. The direction of area element that is the direction of this area element this is always outward outward means for example if i say i have this uh, pen cylindrical structure like this then of suppose this is the area element i am talking about then the direction of this area element is outward and the direction of this area element is outward and direction from this side area element is outward and this side area element is outward and direction of electric field for the positive charges is, is always outward. So charge is placed in this hypothetical surface known as Gaussian surface. I will discuss in detail the derivation of Gauss law in another uh, video lecture. Today I am just discussing about the statement. Now suppose the positive charge, the test charge is placed here inside this Gaussian hypothetical surface and due to this charge the electric field is passing through this area element and this is the area element this is again a vector quantity so by definition flux flux the symbol of flux is like this phi by definition this is equals to mathematically closed integral of E that is electric field dot ds that is area element and both are vectors ds is vector and electric field is vector. So electric lines of force passing through a Gaussian hypothetical surface is equals to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed in that surface. 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed in that surface. That is phi equals to Q by epsilon naught. Epsilon naught means the permittivity. So the definition, the statement is, it states that total electric flux passing through a closed hypothetical surface is equal to the 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the surface. That is phi e is equal to e dot ds equals to q by epsilon naught. And suppose this is our equation number 1. Now let the charge is distributed over a volume V and rho is the volume charge density. Let the charge is distributed over a volume V and this rho, symbol is rho, is the volume charge density. Then by definition, the relation between charge, 
rho and volume element is like this that is q is equals to integral of rho dv my dear friends the charge density is equals to dq by dv now suppose there is any volume where the charge is placed where the charge is distributed now if we take a very small volume dv then small charge is placed in that volume then charge density equals to dq by dv therefore equation 1 becomes therefore equation 1 becomes e dot ds equals to rho dv by epsilon naught okay now if we will if we will put this equation in equation number 1 that is the value of q then e dot ds equals to rho dv by epsilon naught equation 2 is known as the integral form of Maxwell's first equation or Gauss law in electrostatics. Now this equation 2 is basically for the continuous charges and equation 1 is for basically for the discrete charges. Now continue means where we cannot differentiate between the charges it's just like the water you cannot differentiate this is first drop of water this is second drop of water this is third drop of water. So, so continuous means the continue and discrete means this is first charge q1 q2 q3 q4 second charge third charge fourth charge respectively etc so equation 2 is the integral form of maxwell's first equation of gauss law in electrostatics differential form to solve the differential equation to derive the differential equation we must know the gauss divergence theorem now this theorem is basically uh, states that this theorem is basically used to convert the surface integral to volume integral for example for example if we have any vector a if we have any vector a then according to the gauss divergence theorem the closed integral the closed surface integral of this vector a a dot ds equals to equals to the volume integral by this relation that is that is del dot a dv del dot a dv now it is basically bracket that is this theorem is basically used to convert the surface integral to volume integral or vice versa that is e for if we want to uh, use divergence theorem in equation number 2 then e dot ds this should be closed integral of e dot ds will be converted into del dot e dv now if we will apply the gauss divergence theorem to the to the left hand side of equation number 2 now you can see the what is left hand side e dot ds apply the gauss divergence theorem it will become del dot e dv now put this in equation number 2 so del dot e dv is equals to rho dv by epsilon naught now logically two volume integrals are equal only if the integrands are equal that is del dot e is equals to rho by epsilon naught that is del dot d equals to rho by epsilon naught because both sides the volume integral is with respect to dv or if you want to solve mathematically now take right hand side into left hand side and take out common uh, dv so it will become del dot del dot e minus rho by epsilon naught del dot e minus rho by epsilon naught dv now what is the common here the common here is dv so integral of integral of dv integral of dv cannot be zero so what will be zero it means that del dot e minus rho by epsilon naught equals to zero therefore del dot e equals to rho by epsilon naught by mathematically you can you can mathematically you can also derive this like this also 
or otherwise two volume integrals are equal only if their integrands are equal equation 3 equation 3 is the differential form of maxwell's first equation or gauss law in electrostatic in differential form so uh, del dot e that is uh, divergence of e equals to rho by epsilon naught so physical significance as del dot e is equals to rho by epsilon naught it means the divergence of electric field is equals to 1 by epsilon naught times the volume charge density so more the volume charge density more will be the spreading of electric field that is that is del dot divergence means spreading so more the volume charge density more will be the spreading it is time independent maxwell equation it is it is not dependent upon time so my dear friends we have discussed about the differential form and integral form one more thing i want to share here that differential form is always is always used to give the theoretical point of view and integral form is always used to give the experimental point of view okay so i hope you have understand you have understood the video lecture so please search our website for further reference venascience.com please subscribe and like our channel thank you thanks a lot